Thank you for listening my Emina talk. And thank you so much for this opportunity to speak in Emina today. I'm an assistant professor of Earthquake Research Institute, the University of Tokyo, Japan. I have studied the ozone structure and volcanic zone using electromagnetic methods, mainly by magnetic method. And I have been studying inversion schemes of electromagnetic problems. And today I talk about the effect of the topography and the bathymetry on MT response function and how to consider the effect in 3D MT inversion. And this is, is the agenda of my talk. First, I review the influences of topography and bathymetry on MT response functions. Next, I review the method for incorporating topography and bathymetry in 3D MT modeling. And finally, I briefly introduce my femtic inversion code. And using, yeah. And I'll talk about the first topic. The main scope of this presentation is the effect of 3D topography. But first, I introduce the effect of 2D sinusoidal topography. This is, that is because we can obtain analytical solution for such a 2D sinusoidal topography. And I think that the knowledge about the effect of 2D topography is very useful for inferring the effect of 3D topography. Schwarenberg and Edwards and Ucieto develop an analytical formulation for 2D sinusoidal topography and bathymetry. Originally, Schwarenberg and Edwards 2004 proposed the formulation. That was a group very that was great work. And later, we slightly modified the formulation for the TM mode. In a formulation, the tangential component of the electric field is continuous across the Earth's surface. So our formulation satisfies the physical law of the electric field. This slide shows the spatial distribution of the response functions of our 2D sinusoidal land topography. The subsurface resistivity is assumed to be 100 meter. The leftmost column is the response functions of the TM mode. The horizontal axis is the location along the undulations. Upper finger is the apparent resistivity and the lower finger is the phase. Different color indicate different periods. The short period is 1 second, the longest period is uh, 10,000 seconds. The TM mode apparent resistivity undulates by the topography, but the undulation is independent of period. When we look at the TM mode phase, the phase is slightly changed by the topography. In the second column, the TE mode response functions. Topography effects on the TE mode impedance tensors are relatively small. And the third column, the tipper, the upper is the real part and the lower is the, the imaginary part. Topography effect on tipper increases with decreasing period. The induction arrows, Parkinson convention, points towards top of the undulation. This is a streamline of the electric current density for uh, to the sinusoidal topography. Electric current density is relatively small on hills. And as a result, the apparent resistivity becomes small on hills. On the other hand, electric current density is relatively, relatively large on valleys. As a result, the apparent resistivity becomes large on valleys. These slides also show the spatial distribution of the response functions. 
but the subsurface resistivity change changed as a variable instead of period. The minimum resistivity is 1 meter and the maximum re resistivity is 10,000 meter. Period is assumed to be 100 seconds. Of course, the apparent resistivity depends on the subsurface resistivity, but topography effect on the apparent re resistivity is nearly independent of the subsurface resistivity. Topography effect on tipper increases with decreasing land resistivity. This slides also show the uh, this slide show the sounding curves. The horizontal axis is period. The subsurface resistivity is assumed to be 100 meter. Red lines are the sounding curves on the top of the undulation. Green lines are the sounding curves on the slope, and blue lines are the sounding curves on the bottom of the undulation. At periods longer than 100 seconds, topography effects are nearly galvanic, and the inductive effects increase with decreasing period. Next, I increase the scale of the undulation. I enlarge the amplitude and the wavelength of the undulation five times. Inductive topography effects become large compared to the previous case. So the topography effect depends on the scale of the undulation. Strength of inductive topography effect depends on the skin depth compared to the scale of the undulation. Next, I show the spatial distribution of the response function for 2D sinusoidal bathymetry. The, re the resistivity of the C is assumed to be 0.33 ohm meter, ohm meter, and the subsea resistivity is assumed to be 100 ohm meter. Different colors indicate different periods. The TM mode apparent resistivity and rate have in the previous case. Bathymetry effect on TM mode response functions are nearly galvanic. That is similar to the land topography case. A large difference from the land topography case is prominent bathymetry effect in the TE mode response functions. Bathymetry effect on TIPA are quite large compared to the land topography case. The induction arrows Parkinson convention point away from top of tops of the undulations. This is a streamline of the electric current density within the C. Electric current density is relatively large on submarine periods. As a result, apparent resistivity becomes large on submarine hills. On the other hand, electric current, electric current density is relatively small on submarine valleys. As a result, apparent resistivity becomes small on submarine valleys. These trends are opposite to those of the land topography case. And in addition, I investigate the cause of the bathymetry distortion on the T mode response functions. The left figure shows the yeah. Mm. In addition, I, I, I investigated the cause of the bathymetry distortion on the T mode response functions. The left figure shows the electromagnetic field on the T mode. Tops. Top finger show the absolute value of the electric field. The electric field decreases with increasing depth. But there is no anomalous feature in the uh, in the electric field. Middle finger shows real component of the magnetic field vectors. The T mode magnetic field vector becomes nearly vertical on submarine barrels. 
So anomalous behavior of the T mode response functions must be caused by the distorted magnetic field. In addition, I performed the pointing vector analysis as in the previous studies. Bottom finger shows the pointing vectors. The T mode pointing vector in the C point towards some submarine bodies. So there is an energy flow towards submarine bodies. This slide also shows the spatial distribution of the response functions but the sub resistivity is changed as a variable instead of period. The minimum resistivity is 1 meter and the maximum resistivity is 10,000 ohm meter. The period is assumed to be 100 seconds. Strength of bathymetry effects becomes large with increasing sub resistivity. Bathymetry effect on the TM mode apparent re resistivity also depends on the sub resistivity. And next, I change the resistivity of the C instead of the sub resistivity. The minimum conductivity is 2 siemens per meter and the maximum conductivity is 5 siemens per meter. The sub resistivity is assumed to be 100 ohm meter and the uh, and period is assumed to be 100 seconds. The TM mode uh, response functions are nearly independent of the, res re of the resistivity of the C, but the T mode response function depends on the C resistivity. Bathymetry effect on the T mode response functions becomes large with increasing conductivity of the C layer. This slide shows the sounding curves of the response functions. The sub resistivity is assumed to be 100 meter. Bathymetry effect becomes large with increasing period that is similar to the land topography case. And finally, I enlarge the amplitude and wavelength of the undulation five times. Bathymetry effects become large compared to the previous case. So bathymetry effects depend on the scale of the undulation similar to, that is similar to run topography case. I open the program for calculating analytical response functions for 2D sinusoidal undulation. The source code are available from GitHub. And sorry for the long talk about the uh, 2D effects. From this slide, I, from this slide, I'll show the 3D topography effects. Nan et al. 2007 investigate the topography effect of a 3D trapezoidal hill. The upper right finger shows the apparent resistivity at two hills. Red color indicates relatively large apparent resistivity and blue color indicates relatively small apparent resistivity. And the lower right finger showed lower right finger showed the apparent resistivity and phase along a line crossing the hill. Apparent resistivity is relatively small on top of the hill. On the other hand, on the foot of the hill, Apparent resistivity is relatively large. Those features are consistent with the 2D topography effects I showed before. Recently, Kafo et al. 2018 evaluated the distortions due to real topography of the Hangai Mountains in Mongolia. They used OFEM code to compute the electromagnetic field. On hills, apparent, on hills, apparent resistivity decreases and phase increases. On the other hand, on valleys, apparent resistivity increases and phase decreases. Induction arrows with convection in this figure points away from top of hills. 
those results are also consistent with the 2D topography effects I showed before. Next, I introduce the effect of a 3D bathymetry. I evaluate the bathymetry distortion due to a Gaussian seamount. The upper left figure show the size of the seamount. The height of the seamount is 200 meter and its BTC is about 1 kilometer. The sub resistivity is assumed to be 100 ohm meter. I use the femtic code to compute the response functions. The right finger shows the spatial distribution of the response function along line A. I show the apparent resistivity, phase, and real imagine and the imaginary component of tipper. The blue line indicates the response functions at 100 seconds, and the green line indicates the response functions at 130 seconds. On the top of the cement, apparent resistivity increases and phase decreases. These features are basically consistent with the previous 2D case. But the bathymetry effect of the 3D hue are more complex than the 2D effect. Combined effect of the TM mode and T mode bathymetry effects appear in the in these response functions. Next, I talk about the cost effect. Strong conductivity constructs contrast between the C and the land can cause anomalous electromagnetic field near the coast. This slide shows an, shows an example of the cost effect of a 2D coastline. The horizontal axis is the distance from the coast. Red dashed line decays the location of the coast. The land side cost effect make large, uh, make large the TA mode upon the resistivity of the land empty stations. And the ocean side cost effect reduce the TA mode apparent resistivity of marine empty stations. And inductive distortion appears, appears in the T mode response function of ocean bottom empty stations. The TA mode cause effect have been investigated since long time ago. And it and uh, recently, the ocean side cost effect on T mode response functions have been well studied. The ocean side cost effect can produce cusps in the apparent resistivity and out of quadrant phases in the TE mode. Even such a 2D bathymetry can cause cusps, anomalous phases, and anomalously the tipper. Key and Constable 2011 investigates the cause of the strong cost effect on the T mode response functions. They show that anomalous T mode response functions are caused by the distorted magnetic field. They found that magnetic field has a minimum amplitude around the characteristic frequency. And their pointing vector analysis showed that out of quadrant phases are related to the upward energy flow to the seafloor. The upper right finger shows the streamlines of the pointing vectors. The background color shows the T mode response function, T mode phase. This re these results are calculated by the forward simulation using a 2D model of the Japan Island Trench and Deep Ocean Plain around the area where out of quadrant phases were observed, upward energy flow to the seafloor curves. The upward energy flow should cause the normal phases. This is the end of the first topic. And next I talk about the method for incorporating topography in the bathymetry in 3D MT modeling. At present, the most well-used scheme for empty modeling is the finite difference method. 
FTM. And the most common approach to include land topography is modeling a smooth dipping surface by a sequence of steps. Mura and Hawk 2004 derive a 3D resistivity structure of Merafi volcano by such modeling. They found that the apparent resistivity show large jumps between narrow period bands when they used uh, such uh, a grid. And they obtained good results when they added two additional blocks in each, in each direction from observation point. I think whether additional blocks are required or not may depend on survey area and for the calculation scheme. But anyway, when we, when we use rectangular cells, a fine horizontal grid will be necessary to calculate the electromagnetic field accurately on an undulating surface. The asymmetry effects on ocean bottom MT are much more severe than topography effects on land MT that showed before. Baba and Sima 2002 propose a modeling scheme to incorporate 3D bathymetry in FTM for the calculation. This scheme is called as FS3D. FS3D converts the CIFR duration to spatial changes in the conductivity and permeability of cells. During this conversion, conductance and permeance are conserved in, within each cell. And later, Baba and the Shave 2005 developed an MT inversion algorithm using this FS, FS3D technique. In this algorithm, first, MT response functions with and without 3D bathymetry are calculated by FS3D. And next, bathymetry effect term ZT is estimated. And then bathymetry effect is removed from the observed impedance tensor. And finally, sub resistivity are updated using the corrected impedance tensor. Those procedures are repeated until convergence. And later, Tadaito 2012 proposed another approximate treatment of 3D bathymetry to reveal regional scale mantle structures. They modified a 3D FTMM code to incorporate bathymetry into numerical grid. Specifically, conductivity of each cell is calculated by the volume average of the C resistivity and sub resistivity. And the electromagnetic field on each cell is calculated by spatial interpolation and extrapolation. Sensitivity matrix is also modified to conform to the above treatments. And then Baba et al. 2013 proposed a two-stage modeling scheme that can simulate the effect of small-scale bathymetry and large-scale bathymetry. This is the schematic image, schematic flow of the two-stage modeling scheme. In this scheme, first, impedance tensor, tensors are calculated using a grid that contains only large-scale bathymetry based on the method of Tadaito 2012. Next, impedance tensors are calculated again using the grid that contains small-scale topography based on FS3D. In this second stage, a small fine grid is used for each station. And the magnet field obtained in the first stage is interpolated for the grids of the second stage. And then local topography distortion term is calculated for each station and frequency in the second stage. And uh, finally, sub C floor resistivity are updated based on the grid using the first stage using the distortion terms. This two stage scheme is uh, practical and has been used to reveal mantle structures beneath the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. 
in the recently finite element method FEM have been has been used in MT forward modeling and inversion because deformed element can be used in the FEM. We can accurately incorporate topography in the bathmetry into a computational mesh. In the FEM, we can use several types of element. For example, NAETO 2007 developed by MT forward modeling code using deformed hexahedral elements. And then NAM ETO 2008 developed by MT inversion method using the FAM code based on NAM ETO 2007. But NAM ETO 2008 used uh, the FEM only for estimating topography vector. Inversion itself was performed by uh, FTM code after topography effect correction, similar to Baba and Shape 2005. And later, Cordi et al. 2016 developed a 3D empty inversion method using the deformed hexahedral element. In their method, a date space scout Newton algorithm was used to speed up the inversion. Their inversion codes have been applied to several empty data measured on steep mountains. For example, Mount St. Helens and Transantarctic Mountains. In addition, Graeber and Burn 2014 and Graeber and Collab 2015 developed a 3D empty inversion method using non-conforming deformed hexahedral mesh. The term non-conforming means that one or more irregular hanging nodes exist on some element edges. Non-conforming elements enables us to refine mesh only around observation points. In their formulation, the degree of freedoms of the fine side element are related to the degree of freedom of the coarse side element by equations for constraints. Their inversion code, GoFEM, is also very practical, practical and has been applied to several MT data measured on tectonically active areas. For example, some rocket 2018 revealed a, a cluster scale resistivity structure for a magmatic segment in the Ethiopian Rift. And Kao Koeto 2020 review a crust, review the cluster and upper mantle structure in a region of central Mongolia. And another well used element in the three in the three D FEM is the tetrahedral element. Tetrahedral element also enables us to refine mesh only around observation points. Ren et al. 2013 developed a 3D MT forward calculation method using the tetrahedral element. Their method seeks, na seeks an optimal mesh density by an adaptive mesh refinement technique to ensure accurate solutions. And uh, I developed a 3D MT inversion method using the tetrahedral element. And uh, Usuieto 2017 modified the inversion method to use the data space scout Newton method to speed up the inversion. In Usuieto 2017, we applied the inversion code to, code to the empty data measured on Asma Volcano, one of the famous volcanoes of Japan. After that, we confirmed that my code can be applied to marine empty data. We applied the code to empty data measured on the Ihea North Knoll in Okinawa Trough. In this knoll, a lot of active hydrothermal mounds are situated. And the Handari and the Park Carson 2017 also developed a another 3D MT inversion, inversion method using the tetrahedral element. They confirmed the effectiveness of the, the method by synthetic inversion using the Komemi 3D wine model and the model of sulfide deposit. 
I think at present the FEM using a non conforming hexahedral mesh or the FEM using a tetrahedral mesh is one of the best way to incorporate topography and bathymetry. Both enable, enable us to accurately include undulations of the acid surface and both enable us to make locally refined mesh that can save computational costs. The pros and cons shown in this slide is my personal view. If we need to represent coastline accurately, the tetrahedral mesh will be better because if hexahedral mesh is used, log shaped approximation of the coastline is usually necessary. On the other hand, making process of a hexahedral mesh is much easier than that of the tetrahedral mesh. So I recommend to use uh, hexahedral mesh for beginners. Next, I briefly talk about some approaches with a good potential to incorporate topography in the bathymetry. Formulations for pyramid-shaped element and prism-shaped element has been proposed in FEM. These elements can be used to connect the tetrahedral element and the hexahedral element. But combining several types of elements, maybe we can overcome the disadvantage of each element. For example, Hexahedral elements are used for the full area except for near coastline, and other types of elements are used to represent coastlines accurately. Long, and Long and Far Carson 2019 developed a 3D MP fault calculation method using a mesh free approach, and we can take on 2021 developed a 2D MP inversion method using a mesh free approach. If someone develops a 3D MP inversion based on a mesh free approach, the mesh free approach will be used as, a, as another effective approach to incorporate topography and bathymetry. And finally, I in briefly introduce my femtic inversion code. The FEMTIC code enables us to incorporate 3D topography and bathymetry into a numerical mesh. FEMTIC code is available from GitHub. This code was made, was made using object-oriented programming with C++. You can use it, you can modify it, and you can redistribute it, and you can also use this code for commercial purpose. This is a function overview of the femtic code. Femtic code supports the tetrahedral mesh and the hexahedral mesh. Basically, I followed the approach of Graeber and Berg 2014 for the treatment of non conforming mesh. But in femtic code, we can change the division numbers only of horizontal edges. This slide shows for the calculation result of the femtic code. I calculate the response functions for a trapezoidal hill model of 9802-2007 using a tetrahedral mesh. Red circle indicates the results of the femtic code and dashed line are the results of the previous studies. The calculated response functions were very close to the result of the previous studies. Next, I tested the code using a model with a 2D sinusoidal bathymetry. I calculate the response functions using a 3D non-conforming deformed hexahedral mesh. And I compare the calculated response functions with the analytical solutions. The right finger shows the mesh used for the calculation. Both show the same mesh, but the upper finger includes the element of the C layer and the sub C floor layer. On the other hand, the lower finger only shows uh, the element of the sub C floor region. 
This slide shows the result of the forward calculation. Red lines are analytical solution and the blue lines are the calculated response functions. Calculated response functions are very close to the analytical solutions. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you for listening again.